So welcome to, to this talk. Let's start with a simple question. How many people in this room are C programmers? Raise your hand. Some of you. What does this code do? It's tricky. It will print something. What's that? The answer is Unix. It will print Unix. And if you don't understand this code, it's fine. It's, trick it's made tricky on purpose. It was the winner of IOCCC competition in 1987. And when it won the competition, it was termed as the best one-liner ever received. It was written by David Korn. Trying to maintain KSH code base is like trying to debug this type of code. So this is what I'm going to talk about today. Uh, I'm going to talk about AT&T Corn Shell. When I say KSH or Corn Shell, I mean AT&T Corn Shell. There are different variants of KSH. There's, there's MKSH, there's PDKSH, there's OKSH. I'm not going to talk about any of them. Then I'm, I'll just talk about AT&T Corn Shell. And me and Curtis started working on KSH a couple of years ago, back in 2017. We became upstream, and this will be. I'll, I'll mostly talk about the work that we have done in the last couple of years. And I just have 20 minutes, so I'll avoid going into the deep details. It will be a very short talk. And I give the same talk at FOSDEM this year, and also at All Systems Go. So if you have seen my talk before, you will not find many new things here. My name is Siteshwar. I work for Red Hat. I maintain Bash, Conchal, and some other packages at Red Hat. In past, I have been involved in a number of open source projects that include Fish Shell, Selfish OS. And these days, I'm, I'm, these days I'm upstream in KSH. So what is Corn Shell? It's a very old shell. It used to ship with Unix. Its development started in early 80s. And its initial development was based on original Born shell. So even if you look at the source code today, you will see mentions of Stephen Born in the, in the code. So let's, start, let's try to answer the basic question. Why try to keep the shell alive? What's the point? So let's have another quiz. Uh, it's a very simple bash script. And there's a bug in this script. And the bug is specific to bash. What's the bug? None of you. The bug lies here. Bash is going to fork the while loop in a separate process, and value bar will be lost. If you run the exact same script under KSH, it will work as expected. And it turns out that even though KSH is an old shell, it's rather old than Bash, it's, it still has a superior language specification. The language specification of KSH is large and powerful. It still has better POSIX compliance, and it is still the fastest POSIX shell. Why do I say this? Let's look, look at another example. This is a very simple script. It's it runs a for loop like 10,000 times, and it runs a subshell inside the for loop. Uh, these are the statistics from my system. I ran the, I ran the script on with bash. With bash, it took like 2.9 seconds. With gshell, it took like 2.4 seconds, and with corn shell, it takes like 78 milliseconds. It's so fast. No one uses it today. Why is that? Last year, I was writing tests for Vans built-in. It's a built-in KSH, and I came across this bug in Vans built-in. And I reported this bug in GitHub upstream, and someone responded me on this bug, bug report, saying that exact same bug was reported to previous maintainers 20 years ago. They never fixed it. And the problem is that there are many such bugs in the source code. And so I got involved with KSH back in 2017, in mid-2017. And this was the situation back then. The previous developers have left. Either they have retired or they have moved to some other companies. Uh, the code base is old. It has origins going back to the 80s. The tooling is old. Uh, the build system is old. I, I have examples of it uh, in next slides. We didn't have any revision control history. That's strange, because the whole source code was taken and dumped on GitHub without any revision control history. So we don't know what developers were doing bef before we started working on it. 
there are few meaningful meaningful comments. Either either there are no comments in the source code, or some of the comments are misleading. So that's the problem. That code is tricky. The test coverage was bad. There were many old bugs, like the one I showed you in my previous slides. And it's legacy code base. Like you can imagine the problems. It's 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 a very tough situation to be in. So how do you deal with the situation? How do you maintain the unmaintainable? Uh, the answer is simple. You don't change anything. Um, I mean, this this approach sounds sounds a bit hilarious, but it sort of works in practice because if you care about stability, because your test coverage is bad and the code is extremely tricky, no one understands the code. If you try to fix bugs, there's, it's it's very likely you will introduce new regressions. So how do you end this chaos? You just don't change anything. You fix only critical bugs and Although this approach sort of works in practice, it comes at a cost. It kills your software. If you keep saying no to your users, eventually there will be a day when no one will ask you to do anything. You have to learn to say yes. You want a healthy upstream. So how do you do that? Let's start by choosing some goals. Our primary goal is we want to create a modern but backward compatible version of KSH. There's a large user base of KSH. We don't want to break compatibility, compatibility with that but we want to modernize the code base. Uh, we want to make it easier to contribute. We want better build system. We want better CI. We want better documentation system. KSH is largely POSIX compliant, but there are still some cases where it doesn't comply with POSIX. We want to fix those gaps. And we want better test coverage. When we make a fix, we want to be confident that every change we make doesn't break existing, existing use cases. In short, we want to bring this code base to 21st century. Now let's start working towards the goals. This is a quote from Ken Thompson. Uh, very useful advice. One of my most productive days was throwing away a thousand lines of code. And we followed this advice. We threw away more than 500,000 lines of code. That's a lot of lots of code. Let's look, look at the statistics. The last version of KSI that came out from Bell Labs had around 665,000 lines of code. Currently in KSH upstream, we have 134,000 lines of code. Thousand lines of code. That's a significant, significant reduction. Uh, we dropped almost 80% of the code. So what did we drop? Uh, KSH actually predates POSIX. Uh, and it had support for non-POSIX operating systems. And to support those non-POSIX operating systems, it had the implementation of many POSIX functions. We dropped we dropped support for all such operating systems, and we also removed all these POSIX re-implementation of POSIX functions. At it, it had entire subsystems, like it had its own memory subsystem, that's VMLock, it had, it had its own local subsystem. And KSH is actually not, was not a single package, it was part, it was a sub-package, and it was a part of bigger package, which was called AST, and it had support for all these things that I mentioned here. It had its, sub, it had its implementation of all the Unix commands like grep or cat. We dropped all this and we just retained the core KSH part. And yeah, the, we significantly reduced the code size. And we also threw away the old build system. And the old build system was a combination of NMake and a feature detection system. It's called if feature exists. Uh, it was very hard to debug this system like for example this uh, if feature exists is just shell scripts and it's very hard to debug it if it breaks and the builds were slow we, we threw away the old build system we don't want to maintain the build system so we just threw it away and we moved to mess on and we managed to significantly improve the build times the old build system used to take more than five minutes for clean builds on my system these are the build happens in less than 10 seconds I mean, it, the users don't care about this, but we, as, as developers, we care about it. We want, we want to quickly test our fixes. So it helps us a lot. Now, you have dropped almost 80% of the code, and you are left with 20% of the code. What do you do with it? Start refactoring it. How about this code? What does it do? Any guesses? Uh, 
it's doing something very simple. Uh, it's doing string comparison. It's doing this. And we refactored it. So it's just checking for pods in the slash dev directory and assigning fd variable based on the pods. So why is this code written this way? This was this is probably the fastest way to do string comparison uh, back in the 80s. This code is written in very 80s style. It's a micro optimization, but it's very hard to debug. It's very hard to maintain this type of code. So, so we just refactored it. We care mo much more about readability. We we can just rely on compiler optimizations here. Um, yeah, we want we want the code to be more maintainable. And it's full of it's full of tricky codes. How about this one? It's an if condition, and the first if condition checks if the attributes are set, and the second condition checks if attributes are not set. And we is that it tr is just a macro; it does bitwise end operation. So, anyone wants to take a guess, what what would this if condition do? checks if either one of the attributes is set, but not both. The second condition will fail if both the attributes are set. And this is a comment in the source code. This should never happen, guaranteed by design and got sacrifice. It was actually happening. There was a bug in this code. Never rely on got sacrifices. R write tests for your code. And in Fedora 30, GCC was rebased to version 9.0, and it brought, broke KSH building upstream. And the file I was debugging had this comment. You may think it should be simpler, but you shall be confused anyway. It was or it was passing output of GCC command, and the format of the output changed, so that broke the build. And we need more developers. Cone shell is full of crazy problems. If you like to work on crazy problems, try to refactor this code. Uh, our source code is hosted on GitHub, and the name of repository is AST. It's not KSH. It's AST. Now, uh, this is a quote from book Practical Reusable Unix Software. This book was released in mid-90s, somewhere around 94, 95. And it talks about the AST code base that we took over. So I'll quote from this book. It was at first a small effort with about 10 people, but it, had, it has grown gradually over time to 25 people. Most are researchers who create prototype software. So there are two key takeaways from this code. The first one is there were 25 people working on this code base. These days, it's just two. So that's why we dropped most of the code to make it easier for us to maintain it. And the second thing is that the people who were writing this code were researchers. They were scientists. And there's a fun fundamental difference between a programmer and a scientist. How do you differentiate between a scientist and a programmer? A computer scientist is someone who looks on one side of the street while crossing one way street. A programmer always looks on both sides. And the reference is about CI and testing. Yeah. Good programmers care about verification. They actually verify stuff, including street signs. So this is our, this is our Travis dashboard. We test every commit on Fedora, OpenSUSE, Ubuntu, Debian, 32-bit Ubuntu, macOS, and all the internal scripts are run through shell check. And we have our custom CI for FreeBSD. We also test on FreeBSD. And this is our test coverage. Uh, our test coverage used to be very bad. When we started working on it like a couple of years ago, the test coverage was below 50%. These days it's around 74%, which is a decent improve improvement. And it will get better. And we also have some third party tests. There's a debug debugger called KSHDB. And there is there are some set of tests which are which are derived out of out of just shell tests. Uh, we run them we run them on KSH upstream, and we execute all the Red Hat internal tests on every upstream build. So our test coverage is slightly better than what you saw in the previous graphs. And we need more testers. And there are many crazy problems in in this code. Like if you start testing it, you will find many crazy bugs. So try it. All the, all the issues should go to GitHub upstream. Um, this, is, this is our Covality Defected graph. Uh, Covality is a static analysis service. And when we started running Covality in early 2018, our Covality Defected used to be about two. 
and this is, is, is around 0 0.3, 0 0.4. It fluctuates between 0 to 0 0.5, which is a decent improvement. And last but not least, we made it simple to try. If you use Fedora, CentOS, or RHEL, you can subscribe to our copper repos. And if you use Debian, SUSE, or Ubuntu, you can subscribe to our, our OBS repos. Both, both copper and OBS repos are updated on every upstream, uh, upstream commit. And we need more test, uh, we need more packages. And we have, we have simplified, simplified the build system. So you don't have to be a crazy packager. You can just run these two commands and the build should be ready. Uh, we made a beta release of KSH 2020 in August. Uh, most of the distros have already rebased to this, but if you don't see it in your favorite distro, please rebase. And since I'm talking about package maintenance, I have to thank our downstream package maintainers. That's Boyan from Debian, Sai from FreeBSD, Ali from Arch Linux, Mike from Gen2, Ryan from Macports, and Stick from Magia. Uh, these are the people who have already rebased to latest version of KSH in their respective distro. So thanks to them, we are able to get some useful feedback. And this is my last slide. And I'll end my talk by asking the most obvious question, because we deal with very old code. And this question comes to everyone's mind. Uh, the question is, is it too late to make a change? And if you answer this question, yes, then, then you are right. If you answer it, no, then you are right too. Uh, life is what you make it. In my previous slides, I showed you a 20-year-old bug. This is the fix for the bug. We fixed the bug after 20 years. And I mean, we started working on this code base in 2017, and people told us that you won't be able to continue to work on it because it's it's very it's written in a very crazy way. You will never make a release out of it. And we made a beta release in August. We are going to make a stable release too. We don't de deny all the problems that we face today in KSH, but despite of all the problems, that's what we believe in. Change is good, better late than never. Thank you for listening. <laughs>